So dear parents and students, welcome back to another video in Test Prep Card channel. I believe all of you are doing great in staying safe. So what we are going to present in today's video. Today we are going to discuss about one of the top college in Jharkhand, popularly known as NIT Jamshedpur. Yes, it's an engineering college located in the city Jamshedpur. So we are going to cover all the information of this college in this video. Just a small request, please don't put your phone down, keep watching till the end, you'll really enjoy because this video is going to be very informative, particularly for those students who are targeting NITs, okay? Fine, so before starting this video, let me just tell you what are the things that we are going to cover in the next 10 minutes slots. So we'll briefly start with the about of NIT Jamshedpur. We'll discuss about NITs, NIT Jamshedpur, particularly what are the highlights of NIT Jamshedpur. Then we'll move on to the courses which NIT Jamshedpur offers with specialization. And then we'll move on to the course-wise fees, that what is the fees of NIT Jamshedpur. Then we'll move on to the course-wise eligibility criteria for the Indian and NRI students. Then what are the reservation policy for the Indian and NRI students? We are going to cover that aspects too. And is there any entrance exam that is required to get into this college? We'll cover that aspect too. What is the application process? And of course, is there any scholarship opportunities or not? Along with the cutoffs, which I have just forgotten to mention. So because there is entrance exam, then there will be definitely cutoffs. So we are going to cover these aspects. And still, you have any doubts, you can ask in the comment section below. All right, let's start. Fine, so let's start with the about or highlights of NIT Jamshedpur. That's popularly known as NIT JSR. Okay, so NIT JSR, it was established in the year 1960. It's a public college. And it's a its governing body is MHRD, that's Ministry of Human Resource Development, which is the governing body for this college. So all the admission related policies or all the placements related activities that all are handled by MHRD. The courses are approved by AICTE and the courses which NIT Jamshedpur offers ranges from UG to PG to finally doctoral programs. Okay, The campus is a lavish campus, I must say 325 acres, a green campus. If you happen to visit this college, you'll really enjoy it. 325 acres, that's a lavish college. See, every institute, every college is a vision, okay? So for this college, the vision is very sharp, very clear. It says that to be one of the premier technical institution for its academic excellence and innovative research to meet the future needs of the society, right? And definitely you will visit the site, visit the site, which is www.nitjsr.ac.in for more updates about this college, okay? Let's move on. Let's discuss about the courses which NIT Jamshedpur offers. Okay, so NIT Jamshedpur offers basically six courses. All right, what are those courses? So yes, it starts with the UG, which is BTEC Honors. It offers BTEC Honors, then MTEC, then MCA, then MSc, then PhD, and finally CEP. So these are the total of six courses which NIT Jamshedpur offers. Now let's discuss about the specialization. So in BTEC Honors, there are seven specializations. What are those? These are mechanical, electrical, metallurgical and material, then production and industrial, then electronics and communication, then civil and finally computer science and engineering. So these are a total of seven specializations in BTEC Honors, right? Now let's discuss about the post-graduation specialization. So post-graduation specializations are a total of 23 in here. Uh, let me just briefly tell you what are those. So this is computer integrated design and manufacturing, then materials technology, then computer science and engineering, then foundry technology, then industrial management, then power science engineering, then structural engineering, then surface science, then manufacturing system and production, then information system and security engineering, then power electronics, then energy system, then iron and steel technology, then extractive metallurgy, then computer applications, then thermal and fluid engineering, embedded system engineering, computer science and computer system, water resource engineering, then MSc in mathematics, MSc in physics, MSc in chemistry. So there are wide options in here, right? Again, at this point of time, I'll tell you particularly, and this is very important for you to know that you should go for that course first, whose demand in the market is really high, okay, because there are ample courses which universities and college offers, right? You cannot do any of these courses. Of course, you will visit, you will check the course curriculum, course pedagogy, course design and take the final call. Same applies in here because this college is situated in a very in a great city, right? That's industrial city. It was one of the first planned city in India. So that's why the courses are accordingly, right? As per the demographics. So you can see the best example in here, all right? Now, what are the PhD specializations? So these are civil engineering, then mechanical engineering, manufacturing engineering, 
metallurgical and material engineering, computer engineering, electrical and electronics engineering, then chemistry, then computer application, then mathematics and physics. So these are the PhD specializations, right? If anyone uh, wish to go to PhD, then of course they will have ample opportunities in here. Now let's discuss about the course wise fees. So I'll discuss about the UG first. So for the first semester and for the general and OBC students for the first semester, this includes tuition fee and institute fee and hostel mess advance somewhere costing uh, 1 lakh 16,000 rupees for the general and OBC students. And this is just half somewhere around 53,500 rupees for the SC, ST and PH students. And in the semester two, this is 1 lakh 4,000 rupees for the general and OBC students and 41,500 rupees for the SC, ST and PH students. Okay. This is for the UG. Okay. And the graduate fees structure. A course wise fee for PG, if I just talk, that was about the UG, that is bad, 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 I mean, particularly for the BTEC honors, right? And if I talk about the PG, in PG, there are again courses. So, in the course of MSc, MSc, then PhD, MTech, MCA, MSc, or MTech. So, just taking a rough idea, that's if I just take for the semester one, for the general and OBC students, this ranges from for the MCA, this is 22,500 rupees. For the MTech, this is 57,500 rupees. For MSC, this is 30,000. And for MCA, this is 57,500 rupees. And almost just half for the SC, ST, and PH students 22,500, 22,500, 22,500, and likewise. And the similar fashion follows in the second semester as well. Okay. So this is the fee structure uh, of PG courses. And of course, you will see here that the fees is low. Yes, the fees is low only because this is a public institute, right? That's why the fees are kept low and these are of course in the MHRD. So MHRD decides everything in here, the fee structure, the admission policy, reservation policy and other things. All right, let's discuss about the course wise eligibility. So the course wise eligibility for the Indian students is such that if you are seeking to take admission in UG courses, particularly BTEC honors. So you have to, of course, clear your class 12 with uh, respective subjects like physics, chemistry, mathematics, and you have to qualify J mains with a very good score. Okay, then you will be called for the counseling process and post that you will be given provisional admission. If I talk about MTech, then you need to clear gate. Of course, I'm talking about graduation that you should be, I believe have done. Okay, so gate for the, for that, then after clearing gate, then you will be called for MTech, of course, gate with required cutoff. In the MSc, you have to clear JAM. JAM is an entrance exam, okay, uh, which is done after, I mean, BSc or science courses. So you need to clear JAM and then you will be called for the interview process in MSc. In MCA, you have to clear NIMSAT with a respective cutoff. I'll cover that aspects in the coming slides, don't worry. And for the PhD, this is a general UGC net. In India, UGC net is the main exam if you clear UGC net then you will be called for the PhD admission, okay? Of course, there are other activities that are being done, like uh, you will be called for GD, you will be called to present your research work, right? So that depends from college to college. You can check the site. Now, eligibility for the foreign nationals. So NIT Jamshedpur provides admission to the foreign nationals, persons of Indian origin or non-residents Indian under DESI scheme, okay? International students from SAC countries like Bangladesh, Bhutan, uh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, as well as from the other Asian and African countries head to NIT Jamshedpur for a quality education. So you can see the proper exchange program in here and you can see the diversity of students can be seen in here. Students in this institute offers the chance to experience another culture, perfect your language, skills and gains and internationally recognized qualification. Yes, as I told, this is one of the top college. So you can see that thing in here, right? You can visit the college site for more updates about this. But yes, they do offer, uh, there is eligibility for the foreign nationals. You can check the site. Let's move on and discuss about the reservation policy. So the reservation policy of the Indian students is such because this is a government institute, right? So it follows the government rules and regulations, which is MHRD. So MHRD is the governing body. So for the ST students, this is 7.5% of the total seats reserved. For the SC students, this is 15% of the total seats reserved. For the OBC candidates, this is 27% of the total seats reserved in that particular course, right? For the EWS, this is 10% of the total seats reserved for the, in the particular course. So that's total comes up to 59.5. So 59.5% of the seats in any course is reserved for the reserved category students and the remaining is for the general category students, all right? Now, if you talk about the reservation policy for the NRI, so this is a clearly mandated thing that there are a total of 259 seats reserved 
this is for the undergraduate level that is for the btech right in this college particularly so 259 seats reserved out of which 175s are reserved for the nri category and 84 reserves for ciwgc okay one more information that's a very good news for those students who are nris is that from the session 2021 to 2022 from this year to the coming years following desa scheme will admit students on the basis of their GE main scores before the registration deadlines so you have if, if you are falling in that category that's well and good but there is one more option by which you can get into this college by going through GE mains okay so you have to register for the GE mains before the deadlines failure of submission of GE main score in the time will lead to the non-attending of the first three rounds of the counseling for the admission resulting in a miss of opportunity to onboard your prospective college so this is a good opportunity for the NRI students yeah, likewise, I just told for the session 2021 to 2022 and coming in uh, year follows, J means rank is mandatory for DESA, CIWGC instead of SAT score. So there are changes that are happening in this year and following it. Okay. Now, if I just briefly discuss about the students enrolled course wise. So you have just taken a data from the last four years, 15, 16 batch, 16, 17 batch, 17, 18 batch and 18, 19 batch. So in the branch civil, this is 89, 90, 92, and 100. If you just see the CSE, this is 93, 102, 95, and 101. If you do ECE, this is 92, 91, 90, and 102. If you just see MECH, that's 92, so 97, 95, 102, and likewise, this is given. So at this point of time, you can just take a final call that in the CSC and in the mechanical branch, the number of students are higher. If you just compare the other branches, which means the demand is higher, which means the placements are good, right? So you can check the sites, uh, particularly for the course wise in this college. And you can follow us on threads if you want more updates about this. If I talk about in the master's program, essentially in post graduation, this is 78 in 17 to 18 batch, then 87 in 18 to 19 batch. Okay. In MTech, this is 193 and this is 215 in the respective years. In the PSE, this was 27 in the 17, 18 batch and it increased to 118 in the 18 and 19 batch. See the jump. So from the data, this is clearly seen that the number of students enrolling in these types of colleges are increasing day by day because this college is really great. And now this college came into this picture, okay, being the College of National Repute. Now, briefly talking about the entrance exam, that what entrance exam that you need to clear to get into this college. So for the BTEC, you have to clear J mains with, of course, a very good score. College of National Repute. For the MTech, you have to clear GATE. For the MSc, you have to clear JAM. And for the MCA, you have to clear NAMESIDE. This is the mandatory condition, right? You have to clear this entrance with a proper cutoff. Then only you will be called for the further process. If you fail in any one of this, like suppose if you are an MTech student, if you are taking admission in MTech and you have not scored so well in GATE, there is no chance that you will get admission in this college. This is likewise for all the courses in here. Okay. PhD is missed. PS for the PhD, this is uh, UGC net. All right. Now, uh, just briefly talking about the cutoffs. So you can see the data right here, which is in front of you. Uh, this is for the last three year data we have 18, 19, and 20, 2018, 2019, 2020. So cutoff is declining, and that's why they are calling more and more number of students. There are many factors behind it but doesn't mean that the examination pattern is easy or the process is easy. The process is tough. You have to go through it. And so you have to prepare yourself accordingly. All right. In short, take a note that prepare well, uh, get a good score. And definitely you will be called for this from this colleges, right? Just this about this cutoff thing. And if I talk about DESA, this is, um, let's talk about the last year cutoff. This is 817 rank. Okay. If I talk about the gate, this is 517, 475, 461, 451. For the year back to back, which is 2018, in the year 2020, the cutoff was 531, 519. This is by score, 494, 470, and 470. Okay. Respectively rounds. So for this, I'll suggest that visit the site of this college and also some threads. You'll get much idea about the cutoff thing. All right. Now, what is the application process? Then the application process is very simple. That is like other colleges do. You have to visit the college official website that we have just discussed in the starting of this video. So NIT Jamshedpur, UG's admission are based on class 12th and GE main score. This is the eligibility also. Candidates who have cleared the set cutoff need to participate in the counseling process by JOSAA and CSAB. And likewise, this is applied for the MTech also that you need to clear cutoff of 
gate and then you will be called for the counseling process if you talk about msc then again this is you know to submit your jam score and then mcf uh, students are required to qualify this nimsat there is this, a link given in here which is www.nitjsr.ac.in slash academics slash admissions slash adm underscore policy dot php you visit the site you will have much idea about the application process that what is application fee and how this process goes okay now if i talk about the scholarship yes this is a government college so there are ample scholarship opportunities briefly discussing about few of them this is welfare development department government of jharkhand yes this college is located in jharkhand right so that's why the jharkhand government provides scholarship to reserved category students and also to the uh category students again there are few parameters like your income certificate should be less than 1 lakh less than 5 lakhs that depends let's have a look it says that uh, sc and st candidates uh, with 2 lakh rupees of their income certificates up to 2 lakh rupees or backward classes with up to 1 lakh rupees so they will get a financial support and that support is in the form of tuition fee reimbursement and maintenance charges okay and again, there are very other uh, opportunities like Foundation for Academic Excellence and Access and then Specialist Scholarship Schemes for Jammu and Kashmir. Of course, there are state by state reservation also like some students of JK or some students of some other categories are reserved, right? So that can also take participation in the scholarship. And of course, there are reservation and scholarship options as you can see. Uh, this is for the uh, handicap students. This is National Handicap Finance and Development Corporation for NTPC scholarship for engineering students, CDIF scholarship, post matric scholarship for the students belonging to the minority category. And again, there are many uh, scholarship opportunities in here. At this point of time, I'll just like to add a few more points here that, see, these are the opportunities that will be given once you enter this college. But yes, there is always a gate open, which is national scholarship portal right? that's called NSP. So you can register through NSP and you are eligible for scholarship. Okay. Again, in that case, some state uh, domicile things and other uh, things matters. You can just visit the site NSP to have much idea about that. All right. So this is just a brief about NIT Jamshedpur. Again, one of the top colleges I just said. And if you have any doubts, any comments, any issues about this college, then you can ask in the comment section below and wish your best luck. Thank you.